So we're recording the meeting so that people who weren't able to join the meeting have the ability to watch it later and that we can also maybe have a summary of the meeting. So yeah, tonight we have several city staff with us. Um, we will get a, they will introduce themselves um, after I'm done talking. We'll get a about 20 minute presentation from the city on the North South bus BRT project. Um, and then really after that, we will have the opportunity to provide feedback, to ask questions. Um, I'm looking at the number of attendees. We have about 30 people. Um, so I think we should, if you are able to, you should either put your question or comment in the chat, or you can also raise your hand if it's easier for you to talk. And so we'll try to manage that in a way that we get to everything. If we run out of time or if there are questions that can't be answered immediately, um, as I said, we're recording the meeting. We're also saved the chat. Um, so if we don't get to a question, I think city staff are willing and able to respond to things after the meeting if need be. And so, yeah, I think we should have all that covered. So I think I'm going to hand it over to Mike and all of you. Thank you, Harold. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here and get us going. And hopefully that's up. <clears throat> uh, I'm Mike Chekvala. I'm the project manager for North South Bus Rapid Transit. I work with Metro Transit, which is part of the city of Madison. Uh, I have a couple other colleagues from the city here, and I'm just going to let them go ahead and introduce themselves quick. Uh, if I could uh, start with Tom, Liz, Jose. Uh, uh, Tom Lynch, uh, Director of Transportation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Callen. I'm a transportation planner with the city of Madison. Uh, if Jose, if you're on. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, Jose Navarro, engineer with the transportation department. All right, and I'm Renee Calloway. I am the pedestrian bicycle administrator in traffic engineering. Thank you, Renee. I knew I was missing somebody. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I just want to start out by saying a couple things. This is the North South Bus Rapid Transit project. Uh, this is our second BRT project in the city. The first one is East West, West with his, which is under construction right now. Uh, we, we see this as a very big deal. We're very excited about this project. Uh, we see it as being potentially transformative with the East-West BRT project. We're right at the start of the project. We're just starting to have uh, some public information meetings. We had a few uh, public information meetings a couple weeks ago, um, and we're now happy and very pleased to, to be working with Madison Bikes to get the word out about the project. Um, uh, just a couple of things about the about the project. We are at the very top end of the project. We're just starting the planning process. Uh, this is a, a, a bus rapid transit project. It's a project whose primary goal is to improve uh, public transit infrastructure on the north south corridor. Uh, you know, so we do need to kind of focus on that. We do need to kind of control the scope on on that. But at, at, at the other hand, we do would like to use this opportunity to help fix some of the bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure uh, along the corridor. So it's a, it's a fairly long corridor. We know that we can't fix everything with it, um, but we're going to try to fix, fix some things with it. And we'll get into some more details later. Uh, <clears throat> um, but just uh, one other thing I'd like to point out before we get started is that uh, I, I think, you know, what we're trying to do here is, is have a help bring about a, a transformation in transportation in the city of Madison, they give people more options to travel, uh, to give them more options besides driving their car, uh, and and hopefully reduce the dependence on 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 driving. Uh, in Madison, some people will have to drive, but you know we 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 try to give them better transit options. We try to give them better bike options. We are we're going to be you know struggling because we we try to we're all trying to get access to the same space on the roadway and the same um, the same same dollar. So it, it's going to be a, a, a struggle when these assets are limited. 
Um, but we're all trying to do the same thing. And so we'd like to work together uh, and, and, uh, and, and have your support on this project. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about what is BRT, uh, some existing facilities, uh, Park Street timeline, and then we'll open it up to, to questions. Uh, so a, a little bit about what is bus rapid transit and how is it different from your, your standard bus route uh, that, that we have. So there are a, a, a couple of distinctions between bus rapid transit and normal, normal bus service. Uh, and BRT doesn't have to have 100% all of all of these features, but it has to have some some aspect of of most or all of them. Uh, so, for example, uh, direct routes with fewer stops. Uh, that's that's the primary way that we can reduce the travel time on the route to so that it's more attractive, and and gets you there faster. A frequent all day service, typically service every 15 minutes throughout the day, so that you're not waiting. Uh, waiting so long for the bus, bus only lanes. So you typically can't have all bus only lanes throughout the entire corridor, but we try to have at least half the corridor be in bus only lanes. That's again, one of the fundamental ways that we can reduce traffic delays and have the route not only run faster, but more reliably. Uh, easy to recognize stations and buses, uh, traffic signal priority at, at traffic lights, Again, one of those fundamental ways that we reduce the red light delay and, and, and keep the bus moving. Longer articulated buses so that we can accommodate more people on the bus and faster fare payment. Uh, so, you know, these things all kind of work together. We can do some of these things individually to kind of help, uh, help things. But when we apply this combination of enhancements to a single route, the ultimate goal is to have that route be fast frequent, reliable, and more comfortable and, and easier for people to use to, to give them a more, a more rail-like and more, a more premium um, uh, experience using the system. As who is building bus rapid transit? Uh, the city of Madison is leading the, the BRT project. Uh, we have several partners who are key to making uh, North-South BRT happen. Uh, one key partner is the city of Fitchburg. Uh, about two two miles or so of the route is within the city of Fitchburg. They're pro providing not only support, but also uh, funding for the improvements within the city of Fitchburg. Uh, Dane County, who has jurisdiction over part of the route, Greater Madison MPO, Wisconsin Department of Transportation, which also has jurisdiction over uh, part of the route and uh, the Federal Transit Administration, which will, which would uh, be providing the majority of the capital funding for the project. Uh, this is uh, the groundbreaking that we had for the East-West BRT uh, system. Uh, I think it was la uh, about a year ago now. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and start to look at some maps. What you're looking at here is, is kind of the overview of the entire BRT system. The East-West Bus Rapid Transit line is shown in red here. This is Route A in our current transit network. Uh, so Route A was implemented in the summer of 2023 uh, in terms of the route that it uh, that it passes that 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 that's shown here. The the BRT component of it is the capital investments that's being made along those corridors. So we're building stations where the dots are we're in implementing the transit signal priority. We're implementing the bus only lanes. Uh, we're implement we're we're purchasing the new articulated electric buses uh, to to run our, along the route. So uh, you know BRT is really about those capital improvements to make the make the system better. The second uh, BRT system BRT line, which is one we're talking about now, is north south, which is shown in green. This is Route B. You can see that B at Route B, the North-South BRT line, is, is shares the corridor with the East-West line on, on East Washington Avenue and through downtown. So it'll use those existing stations that are being constructed now in the bus only lanes along that part of the corridor. And this will essentially be an extension of those improvements to the North and to the South. So, you know, the project is, is in some ways split into two. It's, it'll be one continuous route and one continuous project. 
uh, but we we do have kind of this northern segment along North Street, Packers, Northport, and the southern segment along Park Street, Badger, and Fish Hatchery. So the scope of this project is to add some of those same uh, capital improvements, the stations, the bus lanes, the signal priority along Route B that will exist for Route A. Um, Route A should be completed at the end of 2024. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, he, here's just some progress photos of the east-west line. So with our second line, we have the luxury of of actually seeing what we're what we're planning. Uh, this is a, a two two stations that are under construction. This one on the left is a sta station on Mineral Point Road at High Point, and this one on the right is on Sheboygan Avenue at Eau Claire. So you can see these enhanced stations, which are under construction. Um, these these still have a lot of features that need to be added to it, like the the seating, uh, the the glass panels, uh, and some of the electronics and and so forth. I mean, this this is a progress photo, so it's not totally done yet, but uh, you can kind of see it start to sh take shape. Uh, this is in the median of the street. Uh, so you'll see a platform. This uh, this platform is where you'll stand and wait for the bus or get off of the bus. That uh, height of the platform is 13 and a half inches. It's taller than your typical curb. The reason for that is so that the platform is level with the floor of the bus. That makes it faster for people to get on and off the bus. It makes it easier for people uh, using wheelchairs or other mobility devices, or or who are uh, find it more difficult to 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 board the bus, uh, they can do it uh, more easily and more safely because they don't have that step up. Uh, you don't have to wait for the the ramp to to come down. Everything is 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 faster and easier. Uh, you'll notice that the lanes are red, so these lanes next to the station will be bus only lanes. Uh, that will exist on about two thirds of the east west line and you know maybe slightly less but a comparable part of the north south line um you'll also notice that uh, the station is in the center of the street and so uh one of the most common questions we get is how the heck are you supposed to get on when the doors are on the the right side of the bus the new buses that we're buying will have doors on both sides of the bus so the doors on the left side will open as the bus pulls into the station and then you'll get on and off using the doors on the left side of the bus when it uses these center running stations and you'll get off on the right side when it uses the side running stations. So uh, getting into a little bit more detail, we're going to uh, focus on a few uh, key uh, questions or decision points to, to move forward at this early stage in planning with North-South BRT. One of those decision points is the station locations. Uh, where should the station locations go? There are some that kind of have to be in certain places. For example, we have a station at Aaron Street that serves the, the hospital there. We have a, a station at, um, you know, I'll just point out one on the North side, Sherman and Northport. There's limited places there where you can cross the street and get to the, the station. So there are some places where we kind of have to have stations in certain places, but a lot of these station locations can be shifted around potentially depending on uh, what we hear and what uh, what we what we plan and what gets recommended going forward. So this is one thing I'd like you to just kind of focus on and we're really listening to see if anybody has any suggestions. We've heard so, some already. So if you've shared any with us before, we've we're we're collecting those those thoughts and ideas as we uh, adjust the station locations. Um, uh, so uh, uh, another thing that we're looking at is the running way, and I'll expand that to say the corridor uh, transportation improvements. So you know we're looking at where should the bus lanes go, but we're also looking at what other improvements to to the the corridor would support bus rapid transit, but also uh, maybe as an opportunity that that can be uh, that can be fixed with the BRT project. Um, so we've laid out the the bike uh, infrastructure along the north south BRT line. We've separated in, into the southern half and the northern half. I'm not going to go through all of it. 
Um, but I will touch on a few things. I think at a high level, I think we want to recognize that we we see that there are shortcomings in the bike network along these corridors. Uh, Fish, uh, Fishburg has made some improvements to Fish Hatchery Road uh, south of the Beltline where they had a reconstruction project a few years ago. They've added some infrastructure like a, a side, side path. Um, we have some new bike lanes on Badger Road. Uh, Park Street re remains a fundamental uh, missing link in the bike network. So I just want to point that out. We'll have some more information on that, but, but I, I think that's 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 pretty clear from the from the maps here. Looking at the north side again, we have um, we have some uh, bike lanes that were installed on Northport Drive. Uh, we have some bike infrastructure parallel to Packers Avenue that, to some degree, is is helping things. But again. Packers Avenue, I think we, we recognize that there are shortcomings on Packers Avenue. Um, uh, there have been various efforts and plans to improve bike infrastructure to the north side. Uh, you know, I don't think we'll be able to fix everything along these corridors, but I think we're looking at ways to bridge some gaps and get us closer to what we want to do. Um, so talking more about the running way and the infrastructure along the route, one of the key decisions is to go center running, as we have shown in the um, uh, in the the pictures along Mineral Point Road, or to go side running or outside running, which is more like what we've been doing for a long time. Um, you know, we we've have several bus lanes along around the city, where the bus runs on the right and the doors open on the right hand side. There are some benefits and negatives to both. Uh, generally, we prefer the center running bus lanes, and the reason for that is it eliminates many of the conflicts between buses and right turning vehicles, bikes, uh, cars that are stopped, parked illegally, parked for a short period of time. All of those uh, conflicts typically happen in the right lane, and so when we, even if we have a bus lane, we, we still deal with those conflicts. Um, but you know there are some uh, some challenges with the center running bus lane. It, typically, the outside bus lanes are are typically shared with bikes. For example, on Mineral Point Road, we have uh, we are switching from side running to center running, and then replacing that that uh, that shared facility as it existed with a side path on the north side of Mineral Point Road. Um, outside uh, side running. Is um, basically is, is is kind of the reverse of that. We have those uh, we have those conflicts, uh, but it's it there, but it 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 retains uh, some of some of the some of the benefits that are are there with the facilities facilities that we have. Um, okay, so getting into infrastructure a little bit deeper here, uh, the the project can be broken up into a few segments that have a number of things in common. We're going to start at the south side, uh, looking at Fish Hatchery Road south of the Beltline. This is in Fitchburg. So uh, Fish, Fish Hatchery Road was reconstructed a few years ago. We will maintain most of the investment that was made along that corridor. Uh, we, we need to retrofit BRT into that. We're not, we're not tearing it all out. Uh, so we will retrofit uh, the stations in the median or on the side. Uh, if, the, if we flip the bus lanes from the side to the center, we'll uh, do something similar to what we did on Mineral Point Road, which is make the, the right-hand lane a general purpose travel lane and then make the left lane bus only. So we remain two lanes in each direction. Uh, going across the Beltline, uh, Badger Road would be in mixed traffic. That's just one lane e each direction, not, not many changes that we would make there other than retrofit stations in. Uh, going up Park Street, so we're going to talk a little bit about Park Street. Park Street is going to be a big project, big part of this. Uh, so uh, Park Street is due for a full-scale reconstruct. It has uh, pavement that is in poor condition. It also has many shortcomings in its cross section. It accommodates uh, cars fairly well. It does not really accommodate buses or bikes very well. Uh, it does not have continuous bike facilities. Uh, and it has very few trees along it. Um, to be to be straightforward, it's not a very urban corridor. It's a it's a fairly car centered corridor, and we'd like to improve it uh, as we reconstruct it to make it uh, a little bit more of a balanced facility and support that urban vision. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that 
as we go north along Park Street, once you get north of about Fish Hatchery Road, uh, Park Street is in better condition. That will not be a full reconstruct. That will be a retrofit. We will retrofit the stations and bus lanes into the corridor uh, as, 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 it, as it works. Um, and then this section in the central part of Madison, again, no changes that is being constructed now. Um, we'll, we'll leave the east-west corridor on North Street, which is opposite of Milwaukee Street. Again, that's a single lane street, one lane each direction, and then left on uh, commercial. So that will be in mixed traffic. Um, no, no major changes to those corridors. As we get on to Packers Avenue, we have kind of a complicated intersection with Aberg Avenue. And so we will serve a station there. Uh, there are a couple of different ways we're looking at doing it, but right now we're using the, the on and off ramps to serve stations on the ramps at Packers and Aberg. Um, from there, we'll go into new uh, bus lanes on Packers Avenue and then around the curve onto Northport Drive. So currently Packers Avenue and Northport is three lanes in each direction. The concept would be to make the center lane bus only and then the two right-hand lanes would be would continue to be general purpose traffic. And then this uh, loop on the north north end would would likely just be in mixed traffic as we, we go around the loop and serve the, the stops stations on that loop on Troy Drive, Green Avenue, and then back around on Northport Drive. Uh, so we've also have some preliminary concepts for the changes to the bike facilities as it relates to this. And again, very preliminary, just putting some ideas out there. Uh, starting on, on Fish Hatchery Road, if we were to go to center running, we would no longer have that shared bus and bike facility, but we would instead rely on the shared use path that is, has been built along one side of Fish Hatchery Road. It would still be technically legal and allowed to bike on Fish Hatchery, but I think we we recognize that that's 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 basically uh, not really an option for the vast majority of people, and that most people would would choose to use the side path. Um, going to the north, uh, no real changes on uh, Badger Road. Those those bike lanes would remain on Badger Road. Uh, and then Park Street, I'll, I'll show some uh, some concepts in just a second here, but that would be a full reconstruct with a new uh, shared use path along the west side of Park Street between Badger and Fish Hatchery. Uh, that path would replace the existing facilities that, that kind of exist on Park Street. Uh, there are sections of Park Street that kind of have a bike lane and kind of don't, and they kind of start and stop. Um, so that, that whole uh, concept would be replaced by a, a path on the west side of Park Street. We would then have an improved crossing on Park Street and provide uh, connections to parallel routes to, to continue uh, continue journeys to, to the north for people who don't want to bike on Park Street. Um, as we get uh, farther north, north of, of Fish Hatchery or West Washington, to kind of depending on how you define things, Again, base, uh, very few changes. So we, we do have the bike lanes on Park Street north of West Washington. So those would remain as they are. Uh, flipping again to the north side, no substantial changes on North Street or Commercial Avenue. Um, we have an existing bike lane on Commercial. We do not have one on North Street. And then uh, coming around to Packers Avenue, uh, no, no large scale uh, changes to bike facilities, but again, we're looking at some of those those intersections uh, to see how there may be some ways to improve crossings, uh, make connections that that don't exist, um, and then no substantial changes to the bike lanes on Northport. So we have bike lanes that start right around Sherman Avenue. Um, it's kind of different in each direction, but west of Sherman, we basically have 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 on street uh, bike lanes there, um, and then no changes to Troy Drive and, and Green Avenue. Uh, so we're going to kind of start from the the top, starting at Northport, and work our way down. Just dive into these concepts a little more deeply, and and just again to point out these are these are very preliminary, high level concepts, uh, trying to feel out if we're on the right track here. So this is what our, our stations generally look like on the east-west line. Again, center running platforms with enhanced uh, shelter and station amenities. 
Bus lanes in the in the middle. This is currently a, a three lane street in each direction. So we have bus lanes in the in the center, two two general purpose travel lanes. Um, uh, one uh, one area that we're going to spend some time looking at is this particular intersection of Northport, Packers, and Darwin. Uh, this intersection was rebuilt, I think, about ten years ago. It is is very difficult to cross. It's basically impossible to cross. So we're looking at ways to not only incorporate BRT through this in interchange with with a station somewhere in this block, but also try to make it. Uh, more urban and uh, more easy to cross and navigate for people who are walking and biking. Uh, no easy answers. Don't have anything to show any anything to show you yet, but uh, that's just a, a focus area that we're looking at to try to try to make some larger scale improvements. Uh, just a, a note on on these drawings. The uh, the blue lines indicate uh, bus 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 lanes, and then the green lines indicate buses and mixed traffic. Uh, moving down to Park Street, so this is a, a general overview of our concept for Park Street. Again, just 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 looking at cross sections right now, looking at general concepts, a bus lane going uh, in each direction, uh, one to two travel lanes in each direction. We're looking at the possibility of reducing the number of travel lanes from two to one along kind of the middle part of Park Street. We don't know if that's viable yet. Uh, we we think that that would help uh, reduce the the travel speeds and and make the Park Street um, more urban and and safer. Uh, it would allow us to widen the things like the medians and the terraces. Um, still looking at at that, it's it's difficult because it is a state highway, so they do have jurisdiction, and and we're looking looking through those options. But the general concept here is right now, uh, Park Street has three three lanes essentially in each direction, two travel lanes. And then uh, an auxiliary lane that's a parking lane in some places, it's a bus lane in some places, in some places it's a parking plus bike lane. So taking that third auxiliary lane and turning it into a continuous bus lane on the left side of the street. We'd also like to make some improvements like widening the terraces so that we can actually get some healthy terraces with some street trees to provide shade and, uh, and that more comfortable feel as many other urban corridors in Madison have, but, but Park Street does not. Some of that space is coming from the median. Uh, so reducing some of the median width and, and allocating it where, uh, where pedestrians are, are more likely to be. And then uh, this is a concept for the widened sidewalk or the side path that would replace the standard five foot sidewalk on the west side of Park Street. Uh, there are some reasons why it's on the west side, but um, uh, I'm not going to go into that detail. So that would replace uh, this this path with or this sidewalk with a path that's wide enough for bicyclists and pedestrians to path, pass each other, uh, providing a protected facility between between bikes, pedestrians, and traffic. Uh, just moving our way south on the corridor again. Blue is BRT and bus lanes. Green is mixed traffic. Looking at this area now, which is essentially the south transfer point, I don't have anything to show you, but this is another just kind of complicated area as was the intersection of uh, Northport and Packers. We have a couple of things going on here. Um, so the south transfer point will be redeveloped in into a uh, mixed use development. It will no longer function as uh, as the south transfer point because the BRT line will not stop there. It will continue to go to go to from the south and um, to, to the south. Um, so we're looking at ways to replace that facility with a facility that's more supportive of the BRT infrastructure that keeps buses moving, uh, that has a little bit more of an urban feel to it. Um, and so there, there are a few, few options that we're exploring there. Again, I don't have anything to show you yet, uh, but I'm just pointing out that we're, we're looking at, at this area and looking for ways to accommodate uh, what we need to have there. We don't have the same volume of buses and the same number of routes coming in and out of that area as we had before the transit network redesign, uh, but we do have a couple routes, G, H, and O, that will interact with the north-south BRT line 
Route B. And so uh, we, we do need to, to do that. So we're looking at some options in that area. We're also looking at the Park and Badger intersection. This is an intersection that was again, rebuilt about, um, like to say 10 to 20 years ago. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's very car oriented. It's, it does not serve pedestrians, bikes or transit users very well. And so we would like to make changes to that intersection to, um, to benefit uh, all, all users of, of that intersection. Uh, one more thing to show you as we go to the south, the current end of Route B is, is here at McKee and Fish Hatchery. Uh, the, the, so the, the current end of Route B is essentially one station to the north here on Caddis Bend. So we're proposing to extend the line about a half mile to the south that would get it to McKee Road and Fish Hatchery, which is this uh, this this dot here on on a street that's called Triverton Pike. That does a couple things for us. It gets us one stop further into Fitchburg, serving a, a, a kind of a node there where people can uh, get to the BRT service from uh, several several places around Fitchburg, where the the current end of Route B is just a little bit too far. It also gives us an off street terminal that where we can charge the bus. We do need a place where we can charge uh, the electric buses at the end of the line so that they can continue to, to provide service and not, um, not run out of uh, batteries. But uh, what I'm trying to show you here is that we're also looking at the concept of extending it a couple stations farther to the south. And this is at the, re re at the uh, request of the city of Fitchburg. Uh, this concept would extend Route B farther south along Fish Hatchery Road towards East Sherrill or Lacey Road, providing service, uh, BRT service to the Fitchburg Civic Campus, um, which is uh, it's kind of the, the downtown of, of Fitchburg. Um, and so we're looking into the feasibility of that. There are a couple of questions. Uh, you know, there is a cost associated with this um, and there there are some challenges, but we're looking into it. So. You know, any any comments or thoughts about any of these things, uh, certainly welcome. Um, or, you know, anything about the project in general, I'm just trying to kind of give you some some information about where we are and how we're how we're planning uh, this project. So uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll we'll come back up above the clouds a little bit. Uh, talk about timeline. Uh, so, you know, the BRT system has been in planning for about the last decade. Uh, we're now implementing the second of essentially the two lines. We are at the very start of the planning process for the north-south BRT route. A planning, design, and environmental evaluation will last from 2023, which is uh, really just about coming to an end here through 2024 and 2025. Construction will last about two years. And then we hope to implement the system Within about four to five years, it's uh, it's a little bit hard to to make any predictions that go out that far, but you know probably looking in the 2027, 2028 timeframe. Um, a couple other ways to provide comments, and you know we'll post this. We can go back to this, um, but we have an online form where you can provide comments like with a QR code. We also have a map where you can uh, view the north south BRT line and. Uh, provide comments on the map, and we can we can come back to show that. But I just want to kind of finish out a couple other options here. We have a website, madisonbrt.com. If you go there, you'll kind of see two streams. You'll see the east-west BRT project, where you can get things like updates to the construction process, and then you'll see north-south BRT, where you'll see some of this information and some of the planning work that's being done. We have an email address dedicated to this project, brt at cityofmadison.com. Those emails go to myself, uh, Liz, Tom, and others uh, others working directly on the project. You can also sign up for email updates uh, to get uh, notifications of, of any upcoming meetings. Um, so it's a lot of information, it's pretty dense. I think I'm gonna end it around there. And um, I don't know, maybe I should just, just go back here in case anybody um, wants to get those links. Um, but thanks for that. And um, we can open it up to any questions or comments. Yeah, thanks so much, Mike, for giving us this very brief, but yeah, there's a lot to digest here. And I already see questions in the chat. And yeah, we do have 35 people. So be, uh, feel free to either put your questions or comments in the chat, or you can also raise your hand if you'd rather ask it yourself. 
So, um, and I'll try to keep an eye on here. I think I, see, yeah, I see some questions from Craig about BRT having a dedicated lane on North Park Street between Regent and University Avenue and what that would look like. Okay, so between Regent and University Avenue, it, it does get a little complicated in here. Uh, let me see if I can go back to one of these types of drawings. So um, what this would look like is we would have uh, dedicated lanes on uh, on Park Street as, as it goes up to West Washington. What this would probably look like is northbound, you have two lanes. Uh, so as you as you receive, you have those two receiving lanes northbound on Park Street, north of West Washington. The left lane would be dedicated towards two cars turning left on Regent Street. So this is shown in uh, somewhat of a simplified fashion, but you'd have uh, two two lanes uh, approaching uh, approaching Regent Street. One would be for uh, cars to go. Actually, you'd have three lanes approaching Regent Street. One would be for, for cars and other vehicles to go through and right, uh, a bus lane, and then a left turn lane. So that, that left turn lane, would, that bus lane would develop somewhere uh, somewhere in between these two intersections. Uh, southbound, we'd like to have kind of a similar situation where southbound, we have uh, a, a southbound left lane that becomes dedicated to turning left onto Regent Street. And at that point, you have a bus only lane that begins and then goes through uh, through Southbound Park that would have one southbound travel lane and one southbound bus lane. Um, we are a little bit concerned about having just one southbound general purpose lane at West Washington Avenue. So we're looking to see if we can truly have that southbound bus lane going all the way through. Uh, another option would be to kind of do that same thing at Regent Street, but then have the second lane open up uh, to general purpose traffic. Obviously, we'd like to have that continuous dedicated bus only lane, but, um, uh, you know, we, we do need to work within the confines of what we can do. Yeah, thanks. And Greg had a follow up question on the 400 to 1400 South Park Street blocks where many buildings abut the sidewalk and how that would um, go together with building a path there. Okay, so the path would 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 be from Badger Road to Fish Hatchery. Uh, that is so. This section here, this is where we're doing the the full reconstruct. Um, so there are some buildings that are tight to the sidewalk there, it, it, and it, it gets a little bit complicated with with each one. Um, but in some cases, they've set that building back. So in that situation, you'd have a sidewalk and then a separate path between the sidewalk and the street. Uh, at, at any rate, the the most of the the side path here would be uh, would be not adjacent to a building directly. Um, it would it would uh, most of those buildings are are set back. Thanks. And the final one from Craig: Would this on street parking on South Park Street? be removed or would that be kept? Uh, we are looking at at that uh, that section, particularly this section of Park Street between West Washington and Olin. Um, I think, you know, it, it's hard to say, but there are some businesses there that re rely on parking. Uh, you know, the concept shown here would, would generally remove parking along the entire stretch, but, you know, there are some businesses that rely on it. And so we're looking at different options. I, again, we don't want things to creep too much, but there, there could, there, there would be some options that would, that would have parking and that would not have parking. Uh, most likely, the the retention of of parking would mean that the bus would have to be in mixed traffic. Thanks. Um, Matt is asking about bikes on buses, where the current bike racks in the front of the bus have a weight limit that don't doesn't allow for e-bikes. Um, what about bringing, so BRT will allow you to bring bikes on board, but will there be restrictions on what you can bring on board? Uh, so the, the bikes will be on, on board. You'll, you'll go in the back door and the bikes will be, there'll be a space for, for bikes in the back of the bus, as opposed to on the front of the bus. I, I mean, you know, this, this person 
clearly knows that, but I just want to kind of point it out for anybody else that might know, not know. And uh, the reason for that is it's faster and it's and it's easier. A lot of people are very intimidated by uh, going into the street and putting their bike on the front of the bus, and it, it does take quite a long time um, with the 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 platforms that are raised up above the street. It's really it really doesn't work as well. Um, uh, you know, we haven't we haven't thought about what what kind of policies we might have for bikes, but you know, I think realistically the the weight will not be a problem. I think the the challenge will be the longer bikes and the trailers are just difficult to fit in there. Um, they're difficult to fit on the front of the bus too, right? I mean, you can't the the trailers don't fit on the bikes and uh, on the front, and some of the very long bikes don't fit either. So I think that's going to be uh, kind of the the limitation. Um, and I think what the way it'll work out in practice is if you can get it in there and find a way for it to fit so that you're not blocking the aisle and uh, blocking uh, people from circulating on the bus, I don't think anybody's going to really complain about it. Thanks. Um, I see some support for extending the route to Lacey Road for serving Promega and the Fitchburg Library. And Janet, you have your hand up. So why don't you unmute yourself and ask your questions before we go back to the chat? Sure, thanks. Um, I'm pretty excited about all this and I'm very happy with the um, the Park Street 15 minute service we have already. So thank you. Um, I um, was wondering about uh, if for the folks who want to ride their bike to the BRT but don't want to take the bike along, is there going to be any bike parking on the uh, medians? Uh, yeah, uh, on the east-west line, we've, we're putting in some bike parking strategically along the route, typically that's on the side of the street. I think we're also looking at possible other options for the north-south line. I think that is one of the shortcomings is that the the bike parking is is typically going to be on the side of the street, not not in the median uh, next to or on the, the platform. And we don't really want it on the platform, but um, we looked at different places to to locate the bike parking. Um, so we will try to locate bike parking along the BRT route so people can drop their bikes off there and then continue on the bus. Um, and we'll continue to look at different options to provide that. Thank you. For that question. Um, Caleb is asking about the planned lane width both for the car lanes and for bus lanes for the route. He understands that some of these streets are, street, are state routes, but um, you're exploring reduced lane count on South Park and reduced lane width may all, also help with achieving reduced speeds. Yeah, now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, so um, if you look at the cross section that's on the, on the screen right now, I hate to use overused metaphors, but we're trying to fit 10 pounds of potatoes into a five pound bag. Uh, you know, it, the, the right of way is 106 feet wide. And to be straightforward, all of these things that we want to fit in here don't fit. And so we're looking at absolutely everything. We're looking at uh, reducing the lane width to 10 feet, wherever we can do that. Uh, even the bus lanes, we, you know, a bus is as wide as any vehicle out there. It's eight and a half feet wide, plus the mirrors. So if you think about that, you know, an eight, eight and a half foot wide vehicle plus about nine inches of mirrors on each side. And then you say, how does it fit into a, a, a 10 foot lane? It's like there's just there's just very little um, wiggle room. But yet we're still looking at, you know, going down from an 11 foot lane to a 10 and a half or even a 10 foot lane. Um, we're also looking at even the curbs, curb heads, curb and gutter. You know, typically the city likes a, a one or a two foot gutter pan. Uh, with with a six inch or twelve inch curb head, we're looking at even going lower than uh, what we've what we've done on any other project to even just try to save you know six inches on the curb head to get uh, healthier trees. You know the we we have the the path there that we'd like to have at ten feet, um, and we you know we might have to reduce that width a little bit, but we don't want to reduce it too much. We want to get every every inch of that path that we can. Uh, we're looking at the median, as I mentioned, you know, looking at uh, removing, uh, at reducing the median. Um, uh, you know, right now the median is is wide enough for 
a left turn lane, but then also a, a pedestrian refuge. But if you think about it in between blocks and at intersections where we don't have uh, the, the need for a pedestrian refuge because of traffic signals or the way it's laid out, or, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, where can we save room from the median to make it all fit? And, you know, that's why we're trying to look at even removing a travel lane um, on part of Park Street. Again, we don't know if that's going to work. Uh, it's it's not, you know, it's, I'm not going to make a prediction either way, but um, it's it's a tall order. But, you know, we're trying because that will that will preserve width for for other things. We're, we're looking at all of it. Thanks, Mike. Um, Aaron has, I guess, two comments, which are a little bit longer, so I will maybe try to summarize them a little bit. Um, so first, he highlights that there seems to be some research that the increased vehicle congestion that can result from BRT implementation when it is not paired with improving bike and pet infrastructure um, can... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have tried to summarize this. Well, let me maybe get to the question part of that point. Are you confident that the bike and pedestrian options included in your plan are a legitimate option that will actually impact the number of people who are able to forego, forego driving? And then the second question is maybe a little bit more uh, specific about what it means to have a widened sidewalk, how wide is that going to be? And how does that relate to the fact that 10 feet, as we have seen in some other projects, is not enough leads to conflicts between people walking and biking? Yeah, uh, so I think the first question was, do we think these changes will have a meaningful effect? I mean, I think we're hoping to, uh, you know, we, we're trying to have a real solution on Park Street where we really have the opportunity to do something. Um, I, I think we've we've been finding that in many cases for many people, just having an on-street bike lane with no uh, separation or protection on some of these higher volume, higher speed streets. Um, uh, you know, even, even though the speed limit is 25, it's just it's just not uh, not desirable for a lot of people. Uh, the second question was about the width of the widened sidewalk. Our our preferred width is would be at least 10 feet. Um, again, I, going back to the potato analogy, I you know I, I think we need to be realistic. Uh, if we can get uh, get as much width on it as we can, I think we'll have a better facility than what we have today. Tom maybe has something to add. I think, you know, part of our goal is is to promote mode shift, right? To have people use transportation that's a less impactful to our environment. But part of it also is just safety. And uh, when Harold said, you know, all ages and abilities, uh, that's something um, that's particularly needed in South Madison. You think about uh, some of those, you know, you have a middle school there, you have a splash park there, you have a swimming pool there, you have the library there. And a parent can't tell their child to go go to the library, right? Where, where do they bike? And so while I'm just gonna say, uh, we, we are trying to make a meaningful improvement in transportation choices that are less impactful to the environment, but we're also providing trying to provide some some safer choices for every age, you know, and every ability. And so I, I'd say that, particularly in South Park, is as much of a goal as anything. Yeah, and I'll just jump into, I just wanted to say, you know, we're focused tonight just particularly on the BRT corridor, but this is certainly not the only project that we will be moving forward um, related to walking and biking kind of in these in the south and the north part of the city. So this is just what's happening with BRT. Thanks. Um, Mark has two questions or comments. Um, one of them is, what about, in, I, I'm, and again, I'm guessing Mark, feel free to chime in if that's not right. Uh, what about protected bike lanes on Park Street, I guess, rather than having a combined multi-use path? Yeah, and uh, so yeah, the question is about uh, protected bike lanes on Park Street as opposed to the the shared use path at widened sidewalk. Uh, we looked at that option. We are proposing the widened sidewalk for a very simple reason, uh, that we can 
make use of the existing five foot width of the sidewalk. So we can expand it by five feet and get a two-way facility. Whereas if we had a, a, a one-way facility on each side of the street, we would need a, 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 five, a five or six foot width plus the buffer on both sides of the street. And it's just, it's just not gonna fit. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead, so I'll come back to other questions um, after, but this seems to be a good follow-up. Andrew is asking uh, the reasoning for having the widened side path on only one side of the street, where widening on both sides would allow safe travel without having to cross the street as many times. And Josh points out that this is very port important on Park Street, which is a major thoroughfare, which yeah, can be difficult to cross. Yeah, and I, I hear you, and, and that that statement is absolutely correct. I think, unfortunately, the answer is the same. Uh, we we just, we, you know, this this corridor really needs to be 10 feet wider, and it's not really practical to acquire a strip along the entire corridor. And so this is what this is what will fit in the right of way. Not a great answer, not not what we'd like to deliver, but that's that's the answer, unfortunately. Thanks. Um, Greg is asking about Madison's complete green streets ordinance, which came into effect after the East-West BRT was already underway. And that complete green streets ordinance seems to require a bike facility along the entire length of Park Street. Is that not correct? Or will this plan provide that? Sure, I can probably jump in on that one, Mike. So complete and green streets does show um, part of Park Street as being um, part of the All Ages and Ability Bike Network. So from um, Aaron Street South, um, however, it is also transit priority um, for the full BRT length. Um, the portion to, the, to West Washington is um, also on the state highway network. So obviously, you know, we want to try and accommodate the All Ages and Ability Bike Network within the right of way while also realizing it's transit priority and it is a state highway. So I think, um, does it require it? It doesn't require it. It requires us to look at it, to review the trade offs, to engage around those, um, and try to find solutions to accommodate the needs within that corridor. But it does. Um, it isn't the full length as on the all ages and ability bike network currently. Thanks, Renee. Um, Peter is pointing out, um, thanks for the great presentation. BRT has great potential to expand transit ridership to folks currently opting for single occupancy vehicles. By not directly serving the Dane County Regional Airport, that seems like a missed opportunity. Is a route that can directly serve the airport something that can still be considered? Yeah, that's actually a good question. And that's been in part of our presentations. Uh, we took it out of this one for brevity, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, so as we were planning for Route B and the North-South BRT line, you know, we knew it would come up uh, either Sherman or Packers because those are the, basically the two roads to the north side. And then, you know, we looked at where it should go from there. One option would be the airport. One option would be the, the Northport uh, Troy loop here. It was historically served by Route 22. Um, uh, and, and we also looked at, at doing both. And I'll, I'll just, I'll start out with doing both. We, you know, again, thinking about what BRT is and how it's different from a, lo a local bus route, it needs to be fast and direct. Um, if it's too out of direction, it's just not going to be competitive. It doesn't matter how many bus lanes or how much signal priority or how many limited stops we have. It's just not going to be direct. So anything that tries to go to the airport and then come back and and do the rest of the route uh, is is just not going to be time competitive with driving. Uh, the um, so looking at doing one or the other. Uh, we did look at the ridership and kind of the utility of going to uh, the airport and going to the west. Uh, it felt like there's a lot more demand um, to the west. There's a lot of there's a lot of housing. There's a lot of uh, medium and low income uh, families living to the west, and so it felt like we were 
uh, accomplishing a bit more by going to the west. We've also implemented some changes with the transit network redesign. Uh, the airport was historically served by Route 20, which ran about every 30 minutes, but required a transfer at the north transfer point and kind of a wait and a delay. And then you transfer to Route 2 or 4 to continue downtown. We replaced that with Route D2, which comes up Sherman Avenue and then goes directly to the airport. So no more waiting uh, through the north transfer point. Um, it doesn't have the frequency or that, um, the, uh, or the capital improvements, the bus lanes, the, the stations that BRT has, um, but it, it does have that direct route to downtown. But this is also something that we are interested in hearing others' thoughts on. Uh, if you think we should relook at this and uh, maybe uh, you prefer the airport, we'd like to know that. Again, these aren't, aren't decisions that we made lightly. These are, you know, decisions that 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 are that are difficult and have a lot of different aspects to them. So, um, if you think that we should relook at that decision, that's information that we'd like to know. Thanks, Mike. Um, Benjamin is pointing out, asking you to consider kids on bikes with any of these street projects. On street bike lanes are not a safe solution. And what would we require to force safe bike infrastructure to be put into any street or transit project? Yeah, I think Tom touched on that, so I'm not going to repeat what he said. But uh, generally, we're trying to to uh, get away from the old standard of just slapping bike lanes on the side and uh, move towards a more protected facility, like you're showing, like you're seeing seeing here. Thanks. Um, Nick is asking about dual use of a single bus lane. Um, probably most of the time that buses going opposite directions pass each other, it will be at a station. So I guess you have a single line going serving both directions, if I'm understanding that right. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a question that we sometimes get, and this is a strategy that, that has been used on other systems. We call it single track. So if you think of it like a, a train, you know, light rail system or a, or a freight train or whatever, uh, they they sometimes have sections of single track where where the you know train you have one track and the train goes both directions on the same track. You could have a system that has a uh, single track uh, that's that's buses, um, and that is used in some some areas. There are some pretty significant challenges to it. It really only works on short lines or lines with 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 infrequent service. What happens is with these bus lanes, we're trying to avoid traffic congestion. Um, but if we have uh, two buses, if we have buses going the same direction in the same lane, we could say, OK, great, we eliminated 10 seconds of traffic congestion. But now we're waiting for three minutes for this bus coming in the opposite lane uh, to to pass us. The other challenge with it is at the stations and at the busy intersections, which you know the inter the stations tend to be at the busier intersections, that's where our choke points typically are. And so what happens is is you know the, those choke points where we have the most need for space, that's also where we can't do the single track, and so we end up with uh, you know a, a lane in each direction at the stations, at the busy intersections, and then if we were to try to have a single track bus lane in between the stations, it's like, well, okay, what are you trying to, to get for that? If you're trying to, you know, have a better bike facility, it's like, okay, not, then your bike facility is going to get shrunken down to the same cross section at the intersection where you need that better bike facility the most. So um, because of those challenges, we typically don't do uh, the single track uh, but there are, you know, there are some some places where it is a tool that can be used. Right. I see it's seven o'clock. I think we scheduled this for one hour. There's still a bunch more questions. So um, I don't know if you're willing to stick around for a little bit longer. Yep. All right, cool. And if anybody else needs to leave, uh, please take a look at the chat. Liz posted um, some comments on other ways to provide feedback. Uh, Liz, do you quickly want to say something about those? Sure. I just posted the link to the desktop version of that interactive map. I was seeing a lot of comments coming in on that. So keep those coming. Those are great. And then also just the link to the comment form is in there as well. And we'll also download 
the comments from uh, this chat too, if people have to go um, and try to reply to those. Awesome, thanks. Liz. Yeah, this is the best way. And uh, if if you if you can't get get to that or whatever, the um, probably the second best way and easier to remember is just email us brt at cityofmadison.com. You go back awesome. to the uh, QR. Yeah, uh, of course. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, next question: Will there? Janet is asking: Will there be traffic lights at every station and or back buttons? I guess to activate those traffic lights. Uh, yep. Um, so uh, all of the stations uh, are typically at traffic signals, and so you would use the crosswalks to uh, to get to the the median station. That's, uh, that, uh, that's another thing that uh, you know that comes up a lot. What happens is when we have the stations in the middle, every time you go to or from the stations, you have to cross half the street. And so, you know, yeah, you do have to cross the street to get to the station. But when we have bus stops on the side of the street, depending on where you're going or coming from, you'll have to cross either none of the street or the entire street. So you're not actually crossing the street more. You're just crossing it half of the street twice or the full street once. Uh, but yeah, we um, uh, on the east west line, for example, we're putting in five new traffic signals. Uh, uh, two, two to three, depending on what you how you how you how you count it, two or three of those are for bus operations, and I'll say two and a half are for uh, are are because we have a BRT station at a at a intersection that is not signalized, and so we wanted to put uh, that 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 signal where people can cross the street. One of them is sort of kind of serves both purposes. Uh, so there there probably will be a couple of new traffic signals uh, with this uh, with this project for that same those same reasons. Thanks. Um, Matt is pointing out that we keep hearing the reason that things can't be done is that there isn't space in the right of way, but there would be space if we removed more car lanes. Why can't we do that? We're trying. Yep. Um, uh, south of towards the south end on Bad, uh, towards Badger Road and the Beltline, that's probably unlikely. And on the north end, um, north of about Olin, it's pretty unlikely because of the traffic volumes. Because it's under Wistot jurisdiction, we have uh, we have limits on what we can do. But in the middle there, it feels like the, uh, there might be a way to remove one of the travel lanes in each direction. And we don't know if that's possible, but if it is, it would accomplish uh, many of these goals. We could have better, better facilities in that section. Yeah. Uh, Tom, do you have something to add? Yeah, maybe we'll just add that, uh, as you said, they're under WISOT uh, jurisdiction, and we are doing traffic modeling, uh, trying to uh, uh, show the Wisconsin DOT that the the traffic delay impacts are are not unacceptable. Uh, however, they, they get to have the final say on this. Um, it's their facility. And so, um, as Mike said, we're, we're we're putting in the college fight, seeing if it, it can be done. But um, the decision will be the Wisconsin DOT's decision. Thanks, Tom. Um, there are two questions or comments about the northern part of the route. Um, Robbie is asking, can you please go over the north side plans again? What bike facilities will be on Northport? There are lots of destinations there, especially for kids and low income neighborhoods on both sides of Northport. And Nicholas is pointing out that the Troy Drive loop, uh, whether that has the same ridership potential as the rest of the route. Okay, so yeah, I'll kind of take those together. So. Um... The basic plan for Packers and Northport in this blue section is to take one of the three travel lanes and convert it to bus only. Um, this facility was reconstructed recently. Uh, we we don't see major changes to this uh, to this this corridor. Again, just uh, thinking back to some of my opening statements here, we know that there this is a 15 mile corridor. We know that there are shortcomings. We'd like to use some opportunities to fix some of them. Uh, we do need to kind of contain the scope and, and do what we can. Uh, so we are not planning major cross-section changes to Packers or Northport. 
Uh, we do know that there are some uh, there's there's some pieces of side path along Packers. You know, we're looking at maybe ways to kind of connect some of those dots, perhaps. Um, this intersection at Aberg and Packers is uh, is is somewhat problematic with the the discontinuous path and the the flying right turn. So we're looking to see if there's some ways that we can make some of those connectivity improvements. And then uh, this this uh, interchange here between Packers and Northport, trying to find some way to kind of connect the the gaps in that area. Um, but the on street bike lanes along most of Northport there would would not be a change with this project as we're currently envisioning it. And I think then the que the second question was what's the demand potential for this one way loop on Troy uh, Troy Green and Northport. Um, you know, I think there's there's quite a bit of demand there. Uh, these this pair at School Road serves a, a pretty good number of people um, in this in this area, and then it also is the the north side is fairly disconnected from a pedestrian and street grid standpoint. So uh, School Road does serve people, you know, coming down here and then uh, getting on the bus. Kennedy Kennedy Road serves. Uh, Quite a number of uh, of apartments and and other people living in in this area. Uh, these two they serve a, a couple of important destinations: the Central Wisconsin Center and the Mendota Mental Health. Um, don't have a ton of ridership potential, but I think as we improve transit service, uh, those are important destinations to serve, and uh, perhaps uh, some um, some improvement. One challenge that we have with this loop today is because it's a one-way loop, I'm just gonna go over this briefly, but we need some place to end the route, right? So the, the bus goes to the end of the line and then they sit and then, you know, they might have 10 minutes to take a break, um, use the bathroom, the bus charges a little bit. Uh, and most importantly, what happens is if the bus gets to the end of the line late, they have that recovery time so that they can turn around and uh, start the, the return trip on time so the problem with a one-way loop is where do you do that? Right now we're doing it at Northport and Sherman. And so what happens is people getting on this loop, they get on the bus, they wrap around the loop, they go to Northport and Sherman, and then they sit and that's the end of the line. And so they sit there for five, 10, 15 minutes and wait for the bus to keep going while the driver's taking their break and getting back on time and all those kinds of things. So I think that issue is, is somewhat uh, making the service less attractive than it could be. And that's another uh, issue that we're trying to solve with this project. Thanks. Um, Stefan has a question. Um, so parts of Park Street require a complete rebuild, which is a good way to justify major configuration changes. Will we also be able to justify major changes on the Packers North for Darwin intersection, even though the pavement condition isn't dire? There's a good amount of space there, so many slip lanes, but a bike pet friendly design will require big changes. Yeah, I think uh, that's a good question. I think we're still struggling with that. Um, it's a little bit inconvenient that it was that it is pretty new. I, I think we'd ultimately like to rebuild the entire thing as a new urban uh, T street T intersection. Um, it is very expensive. It is very invasive. Uh, you start to look at things like, what do you do with all this extra land that is no longer necessary? Uh, so I think that we may end up with some smaller improvements there. I think we might look at things like, how can we have bicycle and pedestrian connectivity? How can we kind of retrofit what's there? And I think, you know, your initial reaction might be, how can you retrofit what's there? It's just really not built like an urban intersection at all. Um, but I think there are some things that we can do to at least provide connectivity. So we'll be looking at all that full range of options. Uh, you know, again, you know, the cost of this project, definitely, I don't want to lose track of the fact that you know, we do need to make this fit within a reasonable budget. It, it is, it is a, BRT is an expensive project. It's, it, it uses a lot of the city's budget and we do need to not only be cautious and conscious of that, but there are also limits to uh, what we can do with our grant funding from the Federal Transit Administration. They have certain thresholds and limits on what we can 
spend the money on and and uh you know they compare the cost to the projected ridership and and um uh they have limits that way so so we'll we'll hope to have more information soon thanks um benjamin has a very specific question is there a plan in place to avoid getting stuck waiting to turn eastbound on johnson from park street uh so the northbound right turn from park street to, to johnson um that is a very sticky spot uh we get hung up there quite a bit uh, we have again <laughs> i hate to sound like a broken record here but we have a couple ideas um, none of them are going to be easy, but um, we're looking at kind of small signal timing and signal adjustments and, you know, kind of minor changes to more major and more invasive things. The solution will probably be somewhere in between there, but um, uh, again, don't have anything to show you, but we're, we're looking at that. That's, that's another one of those spots where we're trying to trying to do something that really has a, a lasting benefit. That's a that's a good point. It's a it's a really sticky spot. We struggled with that right turn for many years. Thanks. And it seems like the chat is starting to slow down. Caleb has one maybe final question. Are you planning to have coordinated signaling at all BRT stops to make a call for a pedestrian phase when the bus stops? Yeah. So the concept is when the bus goes through the uh, intersection, it can call the crossing for uh for the the walk light and that will help if you're getting off the bus and you can't get to the intersection in time to press the button so you don't have to wait an entire cycle to cross the street uh, we're setting up some of the infrastructure to be able to do that i don't think we've decided exactly where and how to implement some of that but it's it's definitely on our radar and so we'll at least have the options to do some of that stuff all right. Oh, just as I was about to say, we don't have any more questions. Um, Benjamin, the entirety of North Sherman looks like an obvious candidate for a protected bike corridor. Is there any way to use momentum from this project to jumpstart that sort of project as part of a comprehensive Vision Zero goal? Yeah, I'm gonna... to take. Oh, do you want to yeah, take? Go ahead. Him? Go ahead. I'll... I was just gonna say I'm gonna lean on you, Renee. So go for All it. All right. Perfect. So I was gonna say we have some planning work unrelated to BRT around um, our bike network and our all ages and abilities bike network and doing some prioritization um, that will be starting in 2024. Um, don't have an exact date for when we're going to start that because we just got our agreement um, with the US DOT for the funding we'll be using for that as well as some pedestrian planning. But definitely we want to kind of look at that. We know for sure we hear a lot from the north side. Um, and so we'll be taking a look at that and prioritizing things so that we can get projects into the hopper um, and um, find the ones that will have the most impact to get to the top. So that's not exactly an answer about North Sherman, but there's some momentum on the all ages and ability bike network and prioritizing them and getting them into our various funding streams and um, prioritizing applications for additional grant funding as well. Thanks, Renee. And I think I was about to send you an email at some point whether you would be interested in talking about that bike planning, bike network planning effort a little bit more at a future um, community meeting. So stay tuned. Um, if you're not on our email list already, um, please subscribe and you will get notified about meetings such as this. Uh, oh, Tom has a question about the range of the buses between charges. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. It's not really so much a question of range. It depends on a lot of factors, such as the hilliness of the route, the speed that you drive at, uh, you're driving on the freeway really drains the battery. Um, it's it's a it's we think of it in terms of hours, in terms of time, and you know that that varies just as much. Um, but you know, it, it kind of it kind of varies anywhere from I'll say about seven hours to about ten to twelve hours, um, depending. But what we're doing is we're putting uh, the on route chargers at each end of the line. And so that will essentially allow it to keep going continuously. 
Um, I don't know if that's that's really what will what will happen, but our goal is they have enough time at the end of the line so that it can so that the bus can keep running all day long and at least at least make it from from the morning to the very end of the day, even if it needs to get uh, charged up overnight by the time it before it goes out the next day. Um, but that is the goal to make it last all, all day with the on route chargers. Great. Um, one comment from Tara about pushing buttons for the walk signal. I think we covered that already maybe, but there's another vote for not making people push buttons, um, especially at new lights for BRT. Yeah, just one thing I'll add about that, uh, add, add to that is where we are uh, changing the traffic signals along the BRT route at the stations, we're typically putting in the audible uh, pedestrian signals for people who are blind and and uh, need that. Historically, we haven't done that at every traffic signal, but we're preemptively doing that on the, on the BRT routes. That's awesome, thanks. All right, um, if I, for some reason, skipped over your question, maybe now is the time to raise your hand and make sure you still get in the queue. Otherwise, I think we can probably wrap up. Well, thank you, everybody. It's a very good discussion. Again, uh, appreciate any feedback or questions and any, any of the forms that you see on the screen or to get a hold of us, please don't hesitate. Awesome. And yeah, we will, we will make this recording available um, in the next couple of days on our website. Um, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to us as well, Madison Bikes, if you have any specific questions that you want to share with us and the city or only with us. And yeah, thanks so much, Mike, and everybody else for being available to answer this great range of questions. Have a good night. I see, I see lots of thanks in the chat. So thanks.